In this clip, we'll learn how to manually create a Mari project to work in. Okay, so here I am inside of Mari, and I am currently in a project. Now, this is the project that we created uh, as a result of what we were learning in the previous module. This is one that we automatically sent over to Mari from Maya via the IMGO bridge. Let's go ahead and close out of this project just simply by coming up here and clicking on this little page icon with the X on it. And once we do that, we should be taken back to the projects tab here inside of Mari. And I want to close a couple of these palettes that we worked with previously. So we have something that looks like this. This is what Mari should look like with the exception of the visible projects that you have when you first launch the application. Now, Mari is different than Maya in the sense that we don't necessarily work in a hierarchy of folders. That is what defines our project. Our project in Mari is a single file that is actually stored within the Mari file structure. This is something that we can't just take one of these in progress Mari projects and send it over to another artist quickly and easily. There's some steps that we have to go through. Whereas Maya, you define a project that you're going to work in or you create a project and then you begin to create scene files that you save inside the scene folder. So to create a new Mari project, we can do that a number of ways. Uh, click on this button right down here is probably the easiest. We can also right click here and choose new. There's also options up here to create a new project and under the file menu doesn't really matter it's all going to get you to the same location what we're looking for here is this new project dialog now I'm going to go ahead and call this one just something like crab now we've got a crab underscore creature let's just call this crab creature if I can type today there we go and now we need to point Mari manually at the geometry that we want to use to create this project with let's come over here and click on this little button and I'm going to browse inside of my files. Let's come over here to where I have my exercise files saved. And I'll go inside my referenced files and look in the geometry folder. Now, we can load in a number of different types of geometry. We're really, we're not limited here. We can load in Alembic files. We can load in FBX files. We can load in OBJ files. Or if we have a PTEX file, we can use that. Now, each one's going to load in just a little bit differently in terms of what you see inside this new project dialog. I'm going to go ahead and for the time being, just keep it simple and let's just load in this OBJ right here called crab underscore module two clip one OBJ. Okay, we'll go ahead and click open there and you'll see that this this dialog shifts just a little bit. And what we're presented with are some mesh options here. Now, the first thing is the mapping scheme. This is where we tell Mari to set this up as a project that is going to use a UV based texturing workflow or a PTEX workflow. Now, it's going to by default want to look for UVs and then if it doesn't find them, it'll automatically create a PTEX project. If we wanted to work with PTEX and we know this object has UVs, we could drop this down and just force Mari to create PTEX for us. I'll go ahead and leave that set to its default setting. And down here under selection sets, we've learned a little bit about those. By default, it's going to try and create those from the face groups. Now we can choose to do that or we can choose to not do that. I'm going to go ahead for this particular example. I'm going to choose don't create. Now, multiple geometries per object is a little bit confusing because it looks like in this version of Mari, they've changed the way this dialog reads. By default, if you're geometry file includes multiple mesh objects, it will merge those into a single object inside of Mari's objects palette. If we tell Mari to create separate geometries, it's ultimately going to do the same thing unless we're working with PTEX. This particular option used to say PTEX only out to the side of it. We'll go ahead and leave that set to merge geometries into one. Now down here below we have the texture portion of this and really this part right here where it says root path and it has this scan button. This is only something you're going to use if you're setting up a Mari project and you know that that geometry already has UDIM textures for it. So you can actually scan and look for those particular textures that are compatible with Mari. 
great. Now down here we have this area that has quite a few options and this is something you can choose to do or you can choose to not do. This is basically going to be creating texture channels at the time the project is created. So if we wanted say a color channel or a dirt channel or things of that nature, we could come in here and check this box to create. We could come in and tell Mari what size that channel should be created at, the color space, the file space, and so on and so forth. Typically when I'm working in Mari, I won't create any of these at startup. I'll just create all my channels after I've already got the project created. Okay, fantastic. Now let's come over here and take a note here that there is this tiny little word, uh, word color space right down here. It's easy to miss if you're not looking for it. Now we can click on this and expand this dialog quite a bit. Let me just drag this up a bit so we can see all of it. So Mari has a color management system that really serves sort of the same purpose as color management inside of Maya. Again, we're going to be working linear behind the scenes inside of Mari. And basically color management is controlling the view transforms and the various transforms that are used in certain situations. So you can see by default, the open color IO configuration is going to be this nuke configuration. And there are a few options here, depending on what you may need. If you're working in a studio and you are uh, taking advantage of OCIO workflows and you have a configuration file you need to load, you can actually do that right here. Now, the rest of these are color spaces and when and where they're used. Things like our monitor, and we're going to use sRGB. For color picking, we're going to use automatic sRGB. 8-bit data, 16-bit data, and 8-bit scalar data, you can see their color spaces. And then for 16 and 32-bit float data, uh, of course, that would be linear. So let's go ahead and click OK on this. I'm going to leave the rest of these set the way they are. We'll click OK, and Mari's going to go about the process of pulling in that geometry and creating our project for us. And ultimately, what you should see here is we get to a very similar place as where we were when we sent that geometry over from Maya using MGO. Okay, great. So at this point, we've learned how to manually create our projects inside of Mari. Let's go ahead and move on to our next clip and talk a little bit about Mari's user interface.